You're watching Camnet Main News. My name is Sharon Kalimbula. Thank you so much for joining us. We now look at the stories making headlines. Partners in a mission partner with Healing Word Ministries International and 1.5 million people in dire need of food in Zambia, CSO Sun. Government commences mobile national registration exercise. And in international news, high poverty levels in Lebanon force over 500,000 children to go hungry. And in sports news, Nkana Football Club draws 2-0 with red arrows. Join me shortly with the details. Msika is here. We have you all covered with just 150 kwacha. You can advertise every day from 17 hours to 18 hours. For a 30-second ad, get the benefit of selling your products and services on Msika. For more details, call our marketing department on plus 260-953-9950-9950. Plus two six zero nine six two four 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 seven two six or plus two six zero nine seven one one seven seven four six seven. Email us on info at camnetvafrica dot com. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for joining us. The details. Government has commenced the issuance of national registration cards under the mobile national registration exercise in different parts of the country. The exercise, which is being conducted under the Ministry of Home Affairs, will run for two 40 days period beginning 1st August 2020. Speaking at the flagging of a ceremony, Home Affairs Minister Stephen Campiongo says government is committed to ensuring that people have national registration cards, especially as the country heads towards the election year 2020. 21, where an NRC is an important document for one that wants to take part in the voting. Details in this report. Phase one of the mobile registration of national registration cards managed by the Ministry of Home Affairs has today, the 1st of August, commenced. Home Affairs Minister Stephen Campiongo has flagged off the mobile issuers of NRCs. <laughs> The Home Affairs Minister says government is committed to rolling out the issuance of NRCs ahead of the forthcoming voter registration exercise. Due to the COVID-19, which is a global health pandemic, the process of mobile issuance of NRCs ahead of the voter registration was earmarked for October 2020. As you may be aware, on the 3rd July, of 2020, I issued the ministerial statement in Parliament where I announced that the Minister of Home Affairs through the Department of National Registration, Passport and Citizenship was going to conduct the mobile issuance of national registration cards beginning the, on the 1st of August 2020. The ministry had planned, like we have waited, to commence mobile issuance of national registration cards in the second quarter of 2020. However, due to the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic, the commencement of the mobile registration exercise was postponed to this month, August of 2020. Today is 1st of August and the exercise is commencing. As I indicated in my ministerial statement in Parliament, government has taken a phased approach with phase one focusing on northern Luapula, Copper Belt, northwestern and eastern provinces where we anticipate that at least 770,000 NRCs will be issued. The minister said government is keen to roll out the exercise to capture as many unregistered Zambians as possible. Constance Mwemba reporting for Kamnet TV News, Lusaka. 
Monza District Commissioner Mulea Munachonga has implored ward development committees in the district to ensure that they protect government investment in their respective wards. Speaking when she officially closed a series of workshops of the ward development committees in Monze, Ms. Munachonga says the knowledge acquired from the workshop should translate into positive change with regards to planning and implementation of development projects in their respective wards. She observes that WDCs are one of the key drivers of development as they are chosen from within communities where they face the same challenges. During the capacity building workshops, members of the WDCs were taking through the law governing their formation importance in the development of the wards, which in turn feeds into national development. And speaking on the sidelines of the workshop, Monze Town Council Public Relations Officer Kanchele Kanchele has thanked the government, the German Development Corporation, GIZ for sponsoring the workshops through La Pogo program. Mr. Kanchele says the knowledge will help in bridging the gap between the local authority and the community. So your effective words and the district as a whole. As you will now be able to effectively participate in the planning process and implementation of development projects in your respective words, do not bank this knowledge you have acquired. Make use of it because development begins with all of you that are here today. Where are your handouts? Are you with my handouts? No, to talk with you already, but one day you find the movie come up for the time. Eh? Well, we are Jana Rami Abikiba Maguire. Well, we are good to him with you. So let us go and share this knowledge. You are now, you now have the knowledge that gives you power to come up with projects which you deem important to the well-being of your community. And through you, communities will be able to effectively evaluate and monitor projects which will lead to an end in you know, contractors defrauding government by building substandard infrastructure as you are now the eyes of government. On a sad note, the death toll for the COVID-19 figures keep rising and currently standing at 14 in the last 24 hours. Among the 14, four COVID-19 deaths were recorded from Levi Monawasa Isolation Center. Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary for Administration, Ms. Kakulubelua Mulalelo, has revealed that two patients were in, in intensive unit at Levi Monawasa Hospital, while the other two were brought in a few hours before their demise after being managed at two respective separate private facilities. Ms. Mulalelo has reminded the public to stay awake and observe the laid down health guidelines in the prevention of COVID-19. The current COVID-19 situation in Zambia is as follows. We have 48 districts spread across all provinces now reporting cases of COVID-19. There is an increase in the number of positive COVID-19 cases and deaths. More numbers of persons addressed. There is now an increased positive COVID-19 cases being detected among people with history of international travel. These including truck drivers, congregate settings, strong workplaces, as well as healthcare facilities. Monitoring of these coming from points of entry for 14 days after entering the country can be challenging due to, due to inaccurate contact details. There is now an, there, thus now an increased load of people desiring to be traced and tested within communities. Relaying of results to affected individuals is ongoing. Our most common probable places of contact for COVID-19 has been in social gatherings, which include weddings, kitchen parties, materato, drinking places, and funerals. We have seen that the male-female ratio stands at 68 to 32, and we ask ourselves, <coughs> are men socializing more, or are they not adhering to public health measures? 
our risk communication and community engagement team will be conducting a CAP survey to answer these questions. Still on matters to do with the health guidelines pertaining to the COVID-19, the new normal operating permits belonging to two restaurants, Capello and Phage Pub in Lusaka's Liwala area, have been suspended by Lusaka City Council for failing to meet control health guidelines in line with the prevention of COVID-19. LCC Public Relations Manager George Sichimba says the two business entities were not compliant as they were found operating as bars and nightclubs with no regard for public health guidelines. We have the details in this report. Capello and Fetch Pub's new normal permits have been suspended. While local bars and nightclubs are not operating almost five months now, some restaurants are operating as bars and can freely disregard the health guidelines. The 1st of July 2020, Lusaka City Council under the Department of Public Health conducted an operation to monitor compliance of COVID-19 guidelines. The operation revealed that two business establishments were not compliant as they were found operating as bars and nightclubs with no regard for public health guidelines. Lusaka City Council Public Relations Manager George Sichimba says the suspension of the permit of operation under the new normal comes after several warnings which were given to the two restaurants. The local authority inspected 35 premises of which 14 were closed across Lusaka from the 24th of July 2020. 22 were found violating public health guidelines by not observing physical distancing and operating as bars. The Council conducted an operation uh, last night. Uh, this is part of uh, our routine activities to make sure that people comply with uh, COVID-19 guidelines, and uh, in the process we found um, uh, two restaurants uh, um, not complying with the guidelines. This is uh, Capero, uh, even after uh, giving them several warnings, and therefore the last council has uh, suspended um, the license, the operations there, and also the page farm. And uh, as, as council, we are continuing right now as a The council has further warned that it will continue to monitor the compliance of COVID-19 guidelines and ensure that the guidelines are followed to the latter. Constance Mwemba reporting for Kamnet TV News, Lusaka. Civil society organization Scaling Up Nutrition, CSO Sun, says 1.5 million people across the country are in dire need of food and may be the most affected by malnutrition. Hence the need for government to prioritize them in the monthly distribution of the 400 quadra emergency social cash transfer in the next six months. In this regard, CSO Sun has urged the government to prioritize COVID-19 emergency cash transfer to flood-prone areas. Organization National Coordinator Matthews Moro explains that although urban areas have equally been impacted by the COVID-19 and require food support, vulnerability levels are higher in rural areas, especially those hit by floods in 2019-2020 rainy season, among them eastern, northwestern, southern and northern provinces. The government, through Community Development Ministry, among other cooperating partners, has set aside $20 million under an emergency social cash transfer program. The the program will run for six months with the target of 118,000 households in 17 most affected districts of the country. As the Civil Society Scaling Up Nutrition Alliance, we would like to, com to commend and to welcome the launch of the COVID-19 emergency cash transfer program that will see vulnerable households in 17 districts receive uh, cash uh, transfers that will support them uh, just from the impact of 
COVID. So with uh, just the impact of COVID, there has been a lot of warnings of how malnutrition levels will increase and just food security uh, is going to be a huge, huge issue. But with interventions such as uh, the launch of the emergency cash, the COVID-19 emergency cash transfer program, uh, then the vulnerabilities are, are going to be reduced. And at the same time, we just want to age government to consider taking programs of this nature to districts that have been worst affected by floods. We have a population of about 1.5 million people uh, that has been affected by floods and they are in serious uh, food insecurity situations. So even with the assessments that have been done that have indicated that these people need support uh, in terms of relief food, we are urging government to consider taking such programs so that they can safeguard, you know, just the lives, especially of the of the little ones, because um, you know, just the malnutrition levels in those areas uh, have already uh, begun to go up. So as long as you know interventions are not taken there that would safeguard the nutrition levels at household level then you know this situation will see more kids uh, lose their lives to malnutrition when it could be prevented through such innovative and good you're watching Camnet news let's take a breather join me shortly for other stories I have used Oracle Pure Glycerin for two years now. It has really worked for me. It has cleared all the black spots on my face. It has restored my skin beauty. It also smoothens the skin. Try Oracle Pure Glycerin for perfect skin. If it's not Oracle Glycerin, then it's not Pure Glycerin. Stay home, stay safe. Times have changed. With the advent of the coronavirus, Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company would like to advise its esteemed customers to avoid visiting crowded places. You don't have to move to pay your water bill. You can do it in the convenience of your home. You can pay your water bills through Zanako Zapit, Stanbic Bank, Standard Chartered Bank and FNB. You can also use Airtel, MTN, and Zamtel Kwacha Mobile Money Transfer Services. For any inquiries to report a fault, please contact our customer service on plus 260-211-251-571, plus 260-975-618-618, and toll-free line 5957, Zamtel only. You can also simply email customer service at lwsc.com. This public announcement is brought to you by the Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company. Water is life. Sanitation is health. This is Camden News. Thank you so much for staying with us. We continue with the news. Partners in Mission Works have partnered with Healing Word Ministries International by donating 20 bags of cement. Speaking during the handover ceremony, PIMW Vice President Cosmas Mokoka says the mission is partnering with different men and of the caller as a means of uplifting each other. Mr. Mokoka says Healing Word Ministries has, was the third stop to donate for the day, adding that the church has been instrumental in shaping the country in a positive direction. And receiving a donation, Healing Word International Overseer, Pastor Moses Chiloba, thanked the group for the donation. Details in this report. The successful actualization of any plan or project requires concerted efforts from various stakeholders and well wishers who understand the vision of one's agenda. It is for this reason that partners in mission workers Saturday decided to visit different men of the caller by donating building materials. The mission, whose patron is President Edgar Lungo, focuses on uplifting the men and women of God by ensuring that their doors are open to people who may wish to come to their aid. Consequently, the mission has donated 20 bags of cement to Healing Word Ministries International, which is headed by pastors Moses and Victoria Chiluba. Reverend Serge Changa is chairman for the mission. As part of our program, we want to partner because the government of His Excellence has provided a platform 
where he wants the church to participate in the development of the country. And we cannot just be preaching the word without looking at the social and material needs of the people. And this is why, sir, we are doing what we are doing. We expect to, to do even more. The main purpose is to see how we can empower retired and, and even serving clergy, most of whom don't even have houses of their own. So as the president was saying, where we have come from, it is to hand over uh, you know, the same cement for projects to build their own houses. And we are expecting some 23 plots that would be here in Lusaka. Yes. Last time, of course, we even gave a house in Mbrokoso, which we completed. But that's just a process we want to go on. In our little way, we want to see how the church can partner with the government of the day and the community for development. And Healing Word Ministries International overseer Pastor Moses Chiloma is grateful to the mission for thinking about them. The, what you saw that the building is not finished because now we've gone into TV. So part of the budget now is going into TV mm. to keep the nation mm. uh, updated. Mm. But that said, please convey our thanks and appreciation. Amen. And uh, I would like to invite the Zambians. Mm. I would like to... You see, the good thing about my wife and I, mm. we are not into politics. That's a good but I like politics. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about politics. So we are so grateful. Any progressive idea that will build our nation will be part of it. So, Reverend, Kamnet is your home. Amen. Amen. If you are going to Mongu, you are going to somewhere, just say, give us a few minutes and we'll open up because we are about building the nation of Zambia. The organization intends to construct 1,000 houses for both retired clergy and those still serving across the country. We cannot give what we, everything, but we know to partner with people who have a vision, it's like we are also part of the vision. Yes, and then this vision we are trying to align to, when you look at the partners, the patron, the Republican president, Edgar Chagwalungu, is uh, with you in trying to search for who would be partners. Mm -hmm. Now he has partnered with the church. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we are looking at Zambia as a Christian nation. Sharon Kalimbula, Kamnet News, Lusaka. The Zambia Association of Colleges Students Union has vowed not to allow students to be used as tools to fuel instability and confusion in the country by selfish politicians. Speaking when the association donated more than 3,000 washable face masks to the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, Zao Kusu President Peter Walia says students are an integral part of national development as opposed to being an enemy to the state. Mr. Walia says there is a bad notion about students only known for demonstrations and protests. He says the association endeavors to promote a different crop of students which is productive and respectful of the government of the day. He says the fight against COVID-19 requires concerted efforts, which is why they have decided to partner with government at such a critical time. Meanwhile, Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU National Coordinator, Chan Dakawe, says it is encouraging to see youths realize that working together with government is a sure way to take in the country to the next developmental level. In other news, Zambia, like many other countries globally, is vulnerable to the effects of climate change, such as droughts and flash floods in recent years. In order to mitigate some of the impacts of climate change, the forestry department in Lusaka is targeting to plant 200,000 trees across the district to replenish those that have been indiscriminately cut down for various usage. Lusaka District Commissioner David Sulubanje toured the Lusaka District Forestry Commission nursery in order to appreciate its ambitious afforestation project, planting over 200,000 assorted trees, species for its 2020 tree planting season. Mr. Sulubanje notes that the studies show that Zambia currently has one of the world's highest deforestation rates, driven by high reliance on forest wood fuel and charcoal 
tobacco as well as forest encroachment. As stabilizing effects on the natural environment, which is uh, water circulation, soil erosion, prevention, and global and micro climate. In order to mitigate the impacts of climate change, uh, the district forest officer, together with the commission nursery and uh, the district administrative office, we have embarked on a very massive program to ensure that uh, come this year, tree planting this year, we are going to plant at least uh, 500 hectares. Just now, we take our last set of commercials. Join me shortly for international and sports news. Stay with us. To create a positive difference in people's lives, one must first understand the way people live. At Savenda, we're here for our community, our partners, and our future as a nation and as a continent. Back in 1997, we uh, decided we are going to create this family journey into a bigger opportunity and uh, created a business called Savenda, which meant save nations to develop Africa. It's always important to give back to the people. The government cannot do everything, but as business entities, we'll be able to reach a lot of people. From our humble beginnings in the telecoms and mining sectors, to our work in energy and development projects, we know how important it is to be true to our roots. Our services are, have to be diversified so that we don't depend on one income stream. Back in the village, I was growing up hunting and doing everything that a village boy would like to do. When you're hunting, you don't depend on one uh, trap, for example. You have to have many traps. So those survival skills brought into the business created opportunities that we, knew, we learned from young age that you can't survive with just one product. Savenda Group uh, involves Savenda Management, which is a consulting, Savenda Express, which is a corporate branding company, Savenda Electric, which is a manufacturer of energy saving bulbs, Savenda General Insurance, which is a general insurance company, Savenda Fresh Produce, Cyber Africa, which is a center for just dealing with cyber security. Now, Savenda is combining local knowledge with international expertise. It's time to be a part of Zambia's rising success and Africa's exciting future. We are a gateway into Africa and now we are praying with global companies who are coming to Zambia for opportunities and to look for companies that are homegrown. And we are proud to be one of those. Welcome back. We now look at international news. Displaced Duncan village residents in South Africa who lost their homes in a fire have received self relief. The affected homestead fall for the constituency of the Minister of Defense, Nosivo Mkabulo. She was on hand to deliver the food parcels and other essentials to displaced people. And in other news, international agencies say the rising number of Lebanese families losing their income and sinking into poverty keeps rising. Save the children, says half a million children are hungry in Beirut only. It is urging the government to help the vulnerable. Al Jazeera and SABC has more on these two stories. In this middle-class neighborhood in the heart of the Lebanese capital, stories of poverty are everywhere. Households have been pushed into desperation. Amal Ibrahim, like so many other families, is a victim of the rapidly imploding economy. She says it has been hard on her 11-year-old son Hamza, who's had to adapt to a new lifestyle. We're borrowing money to feed our children. We're five months short on house rent. My husband isn't working. My family will die from hunger if the situation continues. Children are already hungry. More than half a million of them in the greater Beirut area, according to the charity Save the Children. Poverty is a real thing. Some children currently now go to bed hungry. The negative coping mechanisms 
for the time being are able to kind of fill some of these gaps but on the long run if there's no macro level and sustainable solution there will be death already half the country lives in poverty here in the northern city of Tripoli families struggle with soaring food prices due to the local currency losing 80 percent of its value Children are being deprived from buying what they want. People are under so much pressure. Decades of corruption and mismanagement are blamed for running the economy into the ground. And political leaders don't seem to have a solution. Non-governmental organizations say 80,000 people have lost their jobs in recent months, bringing the total number of unemployed to 430,000, or 32% of the workforce. Many warn up to 1 million out of the 5 million Lebanese population could be jobless by the end of the year. The World Food Program says two-thirds of households in Lebanon have lost their income, and some have started to sell whatever they can to survive. I already sold the living room and some other belongings to buy food and water. Many people are in debt and depend on charity, but those who were able to help now need help themselves. Yes, there are no lives being lost as in typical natural disasters or in typical war, but Lebanese and people that live in Lebanon, whether it's Syrian refugees, Palestinians, others, they are falling off the cliff. So you have lives at risk. Aid agencies are already calling it a humanitarian crisis as lives continue to be destroyed by Lebanon's financial meltdown. Zana Khadr Al Jazeera, Beirut. The remnants of what were homes, the affected, came away with little. They hold out the hope of receiving proper houses one day. We lost our belongings. We are hoping that we will get proper houses. We even appreciate the temporary structures they are talking about. Housing remains a major challenge here. That's why you'll find that there are always fires. We hope the minister and the municipality resolve it. The backlog in housing delivery was noted by Mapisa Nagula. We care. We are a government we care, which cares. And we are not doing this because next year a local government election. I want to emphasize this. We are doing this because we have an obligation to do it, whether there's a local government election or not. Those who lost their homes will be given temporary housing units. This as the metro continues with its strides to eradicate informal settlements. Yanga Funani, SABC News in East London. Well, that's it for international news. We now look at sports news. In sports news, Red Arrows and Kana Football Club played a 2 0 draw in what may be described as a deciding title game for Nkana. Bobo scored a brace at Nkoloma Stadium to level the score against Red Arrows. The 2-0 game leaves the league title race open. The league comes to an end this coming weekend. Well, that sporting item brings us to the end of our news. But before we go, the headlines once again. Partners in Mission Workers partner with Healing Word Ministries International. 1.5 million people in their need of food in Zambia CSO Sun. And government commences mobile national registration exercise. In international news, high poverty levels in Lebanon force over 500,000 children to go hungry. Finally, in sports news, Nkana Football Club draws with red arrows. 
Well, that item brings us to the end of our news desk. But before we go, let's look at the cabinet verse for the day. And it's coming from the book of Romans 12, verse 18. And it reads, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Well, remember to take care of yourselves and prevent the spread of COVID-19 by masking up, social distancing and sanitizing your hands, as well as washing them if you can't manage to buy a hand sanitizer. Thank you so much for staying with us. My name is Sharon Kalimbula. Keep watching Kamne TV, not just another channel.